Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'm talking about the dark side of data science and machine learning. Usually you hear me speak about all the, all the things that we can do good with these concepts. However, when models are improperly trained, used, or maintained, they can have disastrous consequences. In this video, I wanted to give you a few examples of how data science and machine learning has led to really negative consequences. If you stay till the end, I'll even show you how to avoid these pitfalls. If you're interested in further reading about this concept, I really recommend Weapons of Math Destruction, which I've linked in the description below. In it, Kathy O'Neill talks about how models with good intentions can lead to actual negative consequences. Many of the examples that I use in this video are actually directly from her book. When we talk about the dangers of AI and machine learning, usually we think about this. In actuality, it looks a lot more like this. This might be surprising to some people. One of the most interesting examples of when a model went awry has to do with the college ranking process. Colleges were ranked based on a host of factors like how beautiful the campus is, how nice the exit opportunities, etc. One of the things that historically they didn't consider was the cost of attendance. In order to raise these rankings, schools hiked up tuitions and used this money to build great parks, arboretums, stadiums, a lot of expensive stuff. And they were spending like crazy just to improve this ranking. Again, because cost wasn't factored into the ranking model, this spending was reflected in the tuition rates. I'm not saying that this is the only reason for increasing tuition fees, but it's a large factor that often goes undiscussed. A model that incorporated cost of attendance, which they have now, could have prevented the huge spike in college costs and greatly reduced the resulting student loan debt. In this case, the model that they were using was bad and harmful because it didn't include a key input that goes into most students' decision-making process when they're thinking about school. Another type of issue arises when an algorithm is working for its specific use case, but it comes with negative consequences. Take social media, for example. All of the companies have built models to keep users on their platforms scrolling, liking, and interacting for as long as possible. These create huge dopamine spikes in our brains. There's been some evidence that these types of triggers are actually extremely addicting and that social media addiction is highly correlated with a, a negative self-esteem or negative self-image. I would argue that these models that are bringing us into social media and keeping us constantly plugged into the platforms are generally not good for our mental health. So with that in mind, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to be alerted when I post my next weekly video. There are also major implications when this comes to the news. Companies that provide news want to maximize the clicks on their articles. Generally articles that are sensationalist or controversial are clicked on the most. This leads to these companies pushing the most controversial news because it maximizes engagement from their audience with their website or platform. Again, the model is doing what it's supposed to do, but for the users of the platform, it could create an incredibly scary and skewed view of the world. There are countless other examples that have roots in finance, policy, employment screening, really anywhere that you can think of. And I'd love to hear some of the, the places where you know, you can think of machine learning or AI models going wrong in the comment section below. Again, these problems generally come in a few different flavors. First, they're either missing important data that is relevant to the group of people that the model impacts. Second, the model is getting improper feedback or is being, trusted, uh, or is being tested on trained data. Third, there's a lack of transparency, like think the financial crisis. Or fourth, there, there's a emphasis on speed to the market without the proper testing on real world data. Another problem arises when we ask who's accountable for the negative consequences of these models. Are the companies, the schools, or even the data scientists themselves responsible? You know, a data scientist will say, oh, I was just doing my job. You know, I, I didn't understand that these would be the negative consequences associated with it. And is that really a good excuse? I would ask that you, you know, personally take some time to think about the consequences of the algorithms that you build. This can't always be easy, but what we do is a powerful tool, and I firmly believe that it should be used for good. To avoid these problems, I recommend making sure to do user feedback on your models. I also think that after you put a model into production, you should make sure to retrain it and test that it's having the desired outcomes that you built it for. Also, make sure you're testing that it's not creating outcomes that you didn't account for. 
When we don't continue to give our models feedback, they can create these scary scenarios because they don't keep an up-to-date version of the world. I would also make sure that you can explain the output of your model. There are plenty of black box algorithms out there, but with some descriptive statistics, you can understand the underlying mechanics of what's going on fairly well. I hope that you come away from this video looking at data science as a tool. Tools can be used for good or for bad purposes, and if they're mishandled, they can you know, turn out to be dangerous. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.